The Great Northern War is known in history as one of the most cataclysmic conflicts in Europe. Throughout its course, Sweden would expand their already massive empire into the Baltic thanks to the efforts of their young king Charles XII, otherwise known as Carolus Rex. In this video, I will go over the details regarding the Swedish invasion of Poland and how this young boy king managed to successfully subdue one of the strongest states in Europe at this time. In the year 1697, at the age of 14, Charles XII of Sweden succeeded his father Charles XI as the new king of Sweden and ruler of the Swedish Empire. From there, he would rule over his Protestant dominion as an absolute monarch. His predecessor was determined to keep Sweden at peace, which was crucial given the turmoil Western Europe was facing due to the wars of the French king Louis XIV, otherwise known as the Sun King. This policy was not a possibility for the new king. The ascension of young Charles was seen as a golden opportunity for many of Sweden's neighbors to attack and regain territories that had been lost to Sweden's previous imperial ambitions. By 1700, a coalition was formed between the monarchs of Frederick IV of the Oldenburg realm of Denmark and Norway, the Elector of Saxony and King of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Augustus II, and Peter I of Russia, more famously known as Peter the Great. War was subsequently declared on Sweden and thus began the Great Northern War. Charles had been making allies as well, securing support from England and the Netherlands as they had been concerned with Denmark's looming threats near the strait between Denmark and Sweden, otherwise known as the Sound, which was a very active maritime trade route at the time. With 8,000 troops and 43 ships, Charles invaded the island of Zealand, which forced the Danes to sue for peace at Travendal in August 1700 after just four months of the war. With Denmark out of the fight, Charles turned his attention to Russia. Peter had led a campaign into the territories of Livonia and Estonia, and had laid siege to the town of Narva. Charles marched his army east to break the siege, and in one of the most decisive battles of his career, crushed Peter's army outside the city despite being outnumbered at least four to one. Instead of pursuing the remains of the Russian army, Charles focused on his third front against Poland-Lithuania. But before we delve into the campaign Charles waged here, we need to examine the state of the Polish-Lithuanian monarchy by this time. The electorate of Saxony and the Commonwealth of Poland-Lithuania was currently under the rule of Augustus II, also known as Augustus the Strong due to his large physique. He had initially begun his career as just the elector of Saxony in 1694 and had made a bid to be elected to the throne of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1697 after the death of the famous Polish king Jan Sobieski III. In order to do so, however, he had to convert from Protestantism to Roman Catholicism. This alienated most of his subjects in Saxony, which at that time had been considered a stronghold of German Protestantism and champions of the Reformation. He soon surrounded himself with more controversy after he had managed to win the election of the throne with the financial backing of Russia and Austria through the banker Berend Lehmann, despite not receiving the most votes. Because of this, the other candidate that had won the most votes, François-Louis, Prince of Conti, was proclaimed as king by the primate bishop Michal Radziowski and Augustus II by the bishop of Cuyave, Stanisław Damski, with the Saxon Count Jakob Heinrich von Fleming swearing to the Pacta Conventa to be Augustus's proxy or puppet. To secure his position, Augustus marched into the Commonwealth with the Saxon army while Conti stayed in France for two months. He began his reign by continuing the War of the Holy League against the Ottoman Turks. He campaigned in Moldavia, and his Polish army under Felix Potocki fought and defeated a Tartar expedition in the Battle of Pithaice in 1698. This victory compelled the Ottomans to sign the Treaty of Karlowitz in 1699, where the region of Podolia and the city of Kamienc Polelski were returned to the Commonwealth. The fear of Swedish expansion put a halt to his plans for domestic reforms, and instead joined the alliance against Sweden with the promise of the territory of the Swedish province of Livonia should he help with the pacification of Sweden. Unfortunately for Augustus, the capitulation of the Danes and the victory at Narva proved Charles XII's military medal to the world, and it was here that our story resumes. The 29,000 strong combined Saxon-Russian army under the command of General Field Marshal Adam Heinrich von Steinau had entrenched themselves across the 600 meter wide Duna River within Swedish Novonia, near the city of Riga. Orders were sent from Charles to the Governor General of Livonia, Erik Dahlberg, in preparation for the crossing before the arrival of the Swedish main army. 
Dahlberg was ordered to obtain around 200 landing boats of different sizes and was also instructed to build a bridge in order to transfer the cavalry across the river. The operation was supposed to be done in strict confidentiality to ensure a surprise attack on the enemy. The Swedish army of 14,000 men arrived at Riga on July 17th, and by that time preparations for the attack were completed. However, bad weather ruined the Swedish plans to attack instantly, and the assault had to be postponed. A Swedish cavalry regiment was left to threaten Kokenhus into the south, effectively forcing Steinau to split his forces so the bulk of his army stayed across Riga. The Allied army was initially under the command of Saxon general Otto Arnold von Pekel and Ferdinand Kettler of Korland who were both ensured of an easy victory. In their confidence, they prioritized their numbers, advantageous position, and Saxon courage in superiority over the Swedes. Prior to the battle, Kettler pronounced even a superior force of 300,000 Swedes would still not be enough to successfully achieve any progress with the crossing. During the evening of July 18th, roughly 6,000 Swedish infantry and 535 cavalrymen started to embark their landing boats in silence. Swedish guns from Riga had continually bombarded the Allied entrenchments across the river the same day and would continue doing so throughout the night and landing. After all the troops were embarked, the Swedes first torched some small boats and pushed them into the river, forming a smoke screen. Then at 4 o'clock in the morning of the 19th, the attack began. Halfway across the river, the Swedes were discovered and fired upon. The four Swedish floating batteries returned fire, and after half an hour, the Swedes reached the beach and were immediately engaged in a fight against Saxon patrols. When about 3,000 Swedish troops were ashore, the Saxons launched their first major assault with 3,500 men. However, the Swedish force under the personal command of King Charles himself held their ground and the attack was beaten back. The Swedes then sequentially stormed and took the nearby Garris Redoubt which seized them ground of at least 200 paces inland, where they managed to establish a good foothold, covering the ongoing construction of the floating bridge. After a brief stalemate, the Swedes formed up to engage in a second attack made by the Saxon general Otto Arnold von Pekel, who intended to drive them back before the arrival of further Swedish reinforcements. This attack was also repulsed. By this time, the Saxon general Adam Heinrich von Steinau returned from Hockenhusen with large reinforcements and took command. He ordered a third assault on the Swedish army, which at this time had almost every man ready from the landing. Since the Swedish left flank was protected by the river, Steinau gathered his cavalry in an attempt to attack the Swedish right, which was mostly unprotected. The attack had some success at first, but was subsequently beaten off after an ongoing attack in the rear by the Swedish cavalry. At 7 o'clock in the morning, von Steinau summoned a war council with his generals and decided to withdraw from the battle. Another wave was thrown at the Swedes in order to cover the retreat. However, bad weather prevented final constructions of the bridge which denied the crossing of the rest of the Swedish cavalry and so von Steinau slipped away with his army. The Swedes lost 100 men killed and another 400 wounded. The Allied forces lost about 1,300 killed or wounded and another 700 captured. 36 guns plus 4 standards and banners had also been captured by the Swedes. After the battle, Charles besieged and took Mittau, and then stormed the Kolbron Redoubt, where 400 Russians were stationed. Only 20 survived the onslaught. Charles later laid siege to Dunamund and shortly after started persecuting the retreating forces who had initially been 20,000 strong during the fight. The 10,000 strong Russian force under Anikita Ivanovich Repnin retreated towards Russia after having scarcely participated in the main battle. The Saxons retreated to neutral Prussia and thus left all of Courland open for Charles who seized the initiative and took Kokenhusen. Despite this, the Saxons and their Russian reinforcements were able to maintain a strong force along the Swedish border. King Charles now had two options, cross into Poland and get attacked from the rear by the Russians, or vice versa. He chose the former, and thus preparations for the invasion into Poland had begun. <laughs>